Hi everyone, <coughs> welcome to Information Economics. So uh, this will be our starting point for using videos to teach you basic ideas about um, the course materials. Today I want to talk about game theory. Okay, Some of you may have learned game theory in the past, but here I will assume that you have no uh, related knowledge. And I will um, start from the very basic ideas. Anyway, we will focus only on those parts that are related to this course. So uh, it will be a very brief introduction. If you want to give yourself a more uh, rigorous or comprehensive um, training about game theory, the, the reference I provided in the syllabus will be helpful. Okay, anyway, let's start. So, <clears throat> what we want to do today is to introduce games under complete information. So our first assumption during today's lecture is that all the information that are relevant to the environment of our players are publicly known. We say that these information are common knowledge. Okay. So that means there is no information asymmetry in today's lecture, in the games we want to discuss. So this allows us to focus on the interaction and the behaviors of those players. If we have information asymmetry, if some players know something that the other players does not know, then modeling them and solving for the game will become harder. So naturally we start our introduction with games under complete information, okay? And then after two or three weeks, we will move to games with incomplete information. Today we will talk about static and dynamic games. For static games, that means there is only one period. All the players choose their actions simultaneously during that particular period or time point, okay? So that's static game. Another type of game is dynamic game. In a dynamic game, players act uh, sequentially. Okay, this is players. Okay, sorry. So, <coughs> these players will be involved in a game <coughs> that has multiple periods. <coughs> and then player 1 makes the decision first and then player 2, and then probably player 3, or it go back to player 1. We will see the timing, time setting when we describe the game. Our focus is not just about mathematics. Okay? We will mathematically formulate games, and then we want to use those solutions to illustrate the inefficiency caused by decentralization. Basically, what we want to do is to show you that if they can cooperate, they can do better, or whether they can do better. Okay? And we would like to highlight what's the impact of decentralization. How large is it? Okay? We want to somehow describe and quantify the negative impact of decentralization. We're going to go to details later. We will start by solving, uh, by formulate a game, and then to solve it. By solving that, we're going to predict what people will do in equilibrium. Okay, this is how we may start to use game theoretic models to study problems in economics or business. Okay, this is our approach, and I will try to demonstrate how may we do that. So. In, the, in this first video, I will start from the very basic example about prisoner's dilemma to open our discussions. The story is the following. There are two guys, A and B. These two persons, they broke into a grocery store and stole some money. Before the police officers caught them, they have hided those money and the, the officers cannot find those money. So there is no evidence to show that they have stolen the money. However, there are some images caught by monitor that showing that they have broken the window. Okay? So there is an evidence showing that uh, they have this amount 
of、um, bad things. They did these bad things, but for money, there is no evidence. And then these two guys were kept into two separated rooms. Each of them were then asked individually about two offers: denial or confession. It says、uh, the police officer would say to one of them and say, "Hey, do you want to confess? So that、uh, do you want to confess about you have stolen the money and tell us where is the money?" Okay, if you do so, then something may happen, or you may choose to deny, and some other things will happen. Let's see what are the con-、uh, results of that. Suppose both of them choose not to tell the truth. If both of them deny, and then they will both get one month in prison. Okay, that's because they, it's it's up it's evident. That they have broken a window, so they must be put in jail for one month. But because there's no evidence for for the the stolen money, so they just cannot be put in jail for longer. However, if one confess while the other denies, then the former will provide evidence to the police, and then the latter will get nine months in prison. Okay. At the same time, the former will be set free because he cooperates with the police officers. Finally, if both of them confesses, then both of them will get six months in prison. Okay, here six is lower than nine. It's because in the second case, I deny, but my friend confess. So that means they even have evidence showing that I am lying to the police officers. So that's why I need to be put in jail for nine months. Okay, so these are the offers. When the two guys are making their decisions, they cannot communicate with each other. So that means they must make their decisions at the same time. Okay, it's not possible for one to make the decision and tell the other guy, and then ask the other guy to make the decision. They must make decisions together. Uh, I mean, at the same time, so they act or they what they want, of course, is to be put in jail as short as possible. Now we have the full story. We want to know what will they do. Okay, we will formulate a game and solve it. In this case, we have two players in this game. Okay, there are two guys to make decisions. So we also say that they are decision makers. Each of them have two options or two possible actions. Player one may choose to deny or confess, and player two may choose to deny or confess. If both of them deny, they will be put in jail for one month, both. Okay, so their utility are negative one. If one deny and the other confesses, then The one, the first one will get in jail for nine months, but the second one will be set free. Or if they confess together, they will both be put in jail for six months. Okay, so these numbers or inside entries marks the utilities of that particular outcome of choices. Okay, the first number is for the first player, and the second number is for the second player. So this is the formulation of the game. Let's try to see how may we solve it. The idea is very simple. For player one, I will think about the following.、Um, I will think in the following way.、Uh, suppose I am player two. If player two chooses deny, what should I do? Okay. Then in that case, I should compare the result of. Denies denial and the result of confession, and then I will naturally choose confession, right? Because zero is greater than negative one. I prefer to be set free directly. Or if player two chooses confession, then I would need to compare negative nine and negative six. And then I would see, oh, six is smaller than nine. That's greater. So 
Immediately, I make a conclusion. In either case, I prefer confession, right? So confession is a dominant strategy in this case because it definitely dominate denial. No matter what the other guy do, I should confess. Okay. So for player two, it's the same thing. And then we can show directly that both of them will choose confession. Okay, because for both of them, confession is a dominant strategy. So we can predict the result. The result is that both of them will choose confession and be put in jail for six months. Okay, we call this the solution of this game. And then before we move to the next slide, look at this matrix again. This is actually not very good, right? Or we can say this is actually the worst outcome for them because together they were put in jail for 12 months. If, for example, they can coordinate and together say denial, they can be put in jail for 2 months only. Then that's definitely better. Or we say for this system it's more efficient because people's people involved in this game becomes happier. Okay? So that means they are doing something inefficient. That's not because they are not smart. Actually they are smart. They have calculated the game. Think about the game and find what's optimal to them. But because they do this individually, not together, not jointly, so eventually the result is just bad. Okay? This is one of the heart of game theory or game theoretic analysis. If it is possible for these guys to cooperate, they may do better. However, because now they are making decisions individually and selfishly, so actually they are doing worse. So as some uh, summary, in this game, confession is said to be a dominant strategy. Okay? The outcome can be improved if they can cooperate. But unfortunately, here they do not. So we say that's a lose-lose situation. If they can cooperate, we will get win-win. Okay? We say this is socially inefficient because this is not the best they may get if they cooperate. Okay, so we will see more situations like the prisoner's dilemma very soon, for example, in today's lecture. But at this moment, keep in mind that there are some situations. There are multiple players in the game. They make decisions to affect each other. And while they are working hard to make themselves better off, the fact that they are working hard actually hurts them. Okay? The fact that they are selfish actually were, uh, hurts them. Okay. Uh, Prisoner Dilemma is good, but there are some other games that actually have no dominant strategy. Let's look at the first game here. Suppose I have two players and they are each have two decisions. The payoffs are here. Is it possible to find any dominant strategy here? No. Okay. If player two choose B, then player one prefers uh, B. But if player two choose S, player one would prefer S. So there is no dominant strategy. Or for the other game, if player one choose head, player one uh, sorry, if player two choose head, player one would also choose head. But if player two choose tail, player one would prefer tail. For player two, you may also do the analysis and see there is no dominant strategy. So if we want to solve these games or to predict the outcome of these games, then we need another solution concept. We need another way to define solutions. That's going to be Nash equilibrium to be explained in the next video. Thank you.